In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how seeds developed upon fertilization. So if you recall, we have already discussed how the pollen grain from one flowering plant can arrive at the stigma, which is the, the top part of the carpal or the female reproductive organs in the flowering plants. Um, and if there's a compatible pollen and, uh, on the stigma, then the pollen tube forms because of one of the nuclei from the pollen grain and its um, compatibility with the cells of the female plant, pollen tube forms. This then allows the two sperm to, from the pollen to enter the ovule. One of those sperm, so now we're gonna, this is where we pick up now for the fertilization part. One of the sperm is gonna fertilize the egg or ova, but there's two sperm. The other sperm is going to combine with the polar nuclei. As you can see here, they're labeled. And that's going to um, give rise to a structure called the endosperm, which stores food for the developing embryo, in the, at least in the early stages of development. So fast forward to later stages, you can see here steps five and six. So the zygote, which is the fertilized egg, forms, and then the seed will develop inside the fruit. So now we're going to take a closer look at the, the seed itself, the stage here, showing the embryo, the seed coat, and the endosperm, and learn a bit more about what each of those structures does for this early stage of a new plant. Starting with the endosperm. Endosperm develops before the embryo, and as we've just discussed, it comes from the fertilization of the second sperm, with the polar nuclei found in the, um, in the ova. Its purpose is to store nutrients, which are in the form of carbohydrates from that parental female plant, of course, that was storing those carbohydrates from um, extra food she had from photosynthesis that she didn't need to just keep living and doing her normal metabolic processes. So the Endosperm can be used by the seedling after it germinates, or it can be used while the seed is still developing. This is a diagram on the right showing the anatomy of a popcorn kernel. If you weren't uh, thinking about that before, now you're going to think of popcorn in a whole different way. The kernel, of course, is dried up seeds of corn plants. If you could um, cut through it, which is kind of hard to do for um, when it when they're dried so we usually want to moisten them hydrate them and we attempt to do that in lab usually so you can see the main three structures um, we have in the, the the base here the germ and then the main part the majority of the kernel is the endosperm and then the outer covering is called the pericarp so for now we're focusing on the endosperm and what I wanted to share with you is kind of a fun fact is that when you pop the popcorn, all of the white part is actually the endosperm of the corn seed. Let me go back to um, just briefly explain what the purpose of the germ and pericarp are, even though we're trying to focus right now on the endosperm. Um, the germ is the embryo or the actual seed, the part that will be the where the new plant will really be developing from. And the pericarp is actually the, the wall of the ovary that is retained with the seed as the embryo develops, had to be still surrounded by the ovary where the, the seed that, I'm sorry, the, the egg that became fertilized was contained and now is developing into this um, larger structure. Now, corn is a type of monocot plant, so um, we are going to talk about the other group, the eudicots, or some people call it dicot. You might see those terms used, um, so I'm going to try to use the terms consistent with our textbook, which is eudicot. We'll come back to the eudicots. I actually want to fast forward now. I'm going to skip ahead a couple slides to show what happens to the corn um, seeds as they develop further. This is like early stage here. Now we're going to look at the later stage. So this diagram here is still of corn, and it's a mature seed that consists of a dormant embryo. 
So it's the embryo, but it's not really ready to develop into a full new plant. And it's surrounded by its food stored up, as well as several protective layers. So in this particular group of um, monocots, specifically grasses, which corn is actually a type of grass, they have specialized um, cotyledons, which are the also known as the seed coats, called a scutellum, that absorbs nutrients during germination. So that's labeled here in the diagram. Now you won't see that structure when we talk about the eudicots. So this is unique, especially not just to the, all the monocots, but the grasses, including corn or maize, which is um, the scientific, probably the genus, I think, of corn. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> In addition, there are two sheaths that enclose the embryo of a grass seed and aid in soil penetration, abil its ability to actually get down into the soil and start developing where it will be able to absorb water and nutrients from the soil and put out its first root, the, the radical, Then we'll see that later. So those two sheets include the coleoptile, which covers the young shoot. And that's the part that's going to emerge and go above the soil, poke through the soil and make it into the air, where then the, the further stages of development will take place, including the, the leaves for photosynthesis, et cetera. Um, there's also, oh, pardon that noise there's also another sheath that covers the young root called the coloriza so notice the locations of those on the diagram of the mature corn seed and again these are unique to this particular group but now i do want to go back to look at how the process would occur in general for a seed to go from this early stage where you see mostly endosperm and the germ hasn't really um, developed yet, differentiated into the different structures that will become the roots, the shoots, the leaves, etc. Um, so we're gonna look at that through the scenario for a eudicot, how the seed develops from young to mature. As we, again, we fast forwarded for the corn because this is not based on the corn specifically anyways, this is based on a eudicot. And then we'll take a look at the eudicot mature seed. So first, there, um, there's a first mitotic division of the zygote. After the egg fertil is fertilized by the sperm, the zygote splits into a basal cell and a terminal cell. So take a look at the diagram on the right of this um, generic flowering plant here. So assume there was successful fertilization. Here's the zygote within the ovary now. Okay, so it's, even though it's kind of showing it outside of it, it's meant to be like you're just zooming into that little structure there. This is all happening inside of the ovary. Um, so now you can see there's two nuclei in this. Um, it's really two cells that are still connected together. The basal cell produces a multicellular suspensor, which is going to help anchor the em embryo to the parent plant. So you can see how that further develops, the basal cell, which I put in a red box to draw your attention to, and then the suspensor. The suspensor also helps transfer nutrients from the parent plant to the embryo. So that's important because at this stage of early development, the, the zygote and the embryo can get some of the nutrition it needs from the endosperm, but that might not be enough and it could be again if you recall one of the strategies where the nutrients aren't used until after the seedling germinates so it needs to be able to get nutrition perhaps from the the mother plant itself now let's focus on the terminal cell the terminal cell is going to divide and form a ball of cells that attach to the suspensor called a pro embryo so that Pro embryo, that means before embryo. So it's not quite an embryo yet. Obviously, that is going to become the embryo. And you can see that more complexity is happening in that part where the embryo is forming. Now, this is going to differ from this point on in a eudicot compared to a, a monocot. So this is for a eudicot. Two cotyledons, which are the seed coats, are going to form bumps that make the embryo appear heart shaped. 
So this is a characteristic cross-section of a, a seedling for a uh, uticot. Two cotyledons, two bumps. A monocot's only going to have one cotyledon, so it'll look more like a... Um, what, are, what shape am I thinking of? Like an oblong circle, a sphere, or a, a rod. A rod is the term I was looking for. <laughs> Okay, so let's also take a look at some other features here. There's an embryonic root and shoot axis that will give rise to um, these things called apical meristems, which we're going to learn more about that in our next uh, chapter, how plants develop in different tissues, organs, organ systems, etc. Um, but those are going to be on opposite sides of the embryo. So the root apex kind of makes sense. It's going to be towards the bottom because it's driven by gravity. The, the cells of the root are going to be following um, gravity. And then the shoot is actually going the opposite direction of gravity. They're what's called positive and negative gravitropic. That's how the cells respond to that stimulus of gravity. Okay, so that's the basic anatomy of the what's happening inside of the seed of a uticot during its development stage. Now, I do have a video that I won't be able to show in this video because I'm not going to be able to share the audio for that. So be sure you watch this video that I'll also post as a separate link on D2L. But let's take a look now at the mature seed of a uticot, such as a common garden bean. So once it's fully developed, you have the embryo and the food supply stored inside of a hard protective seed coat. In uticots, the embryo consists of the embryonic axis attached to the cotyledons. Below the attachment point of the cotyledons, the embryonic axis is called the hypocotyl, that is labeled here, which terminates in the radical, which is the embryonic root, or the first root that's going to penetrate the seed and make that seed considered germinated once that penetrates the, the seed coat. Above the attachment point, it is called the epicotyl. So be familiar with the anatomy of the mature uticot seed, as well as the one we already saw for the monocot seed the, um, of the corn. Now, both of these examples show, we were focusing at first on the endosperm. Not all seeds contain endosperm. So one that I find very interesting and have personal experience working with and a passion for learning more about them are orchids. Orchids do not have endosperm. Usually, I'm sure there's exceptions to everything, but we're going to go with they don't have endosperm. Instead, uh, instead of relying on their own stored nutrition source to nourish that developing embryo inside the seed, they tend to have a relationship with, um, with fungi. And the fungi provide them with the nutrition that they need to germinate. And this is why working with orchids from seed is a very challenging field to get into. I know people in that field who tell, who tell me how challenging it is and it takes patience and time and definitely the willingness to fail and keep trying. So we're going to um, end the lesson there because next we're going to get into what happens when the seed actually germinates. So the part of this lesson really focused on how the seed goes from the step where it's fertilized, how, when it becomes really that, that zygote up until the late stage of the mature seed right before it germinates.